After the break, it's time to share another moment with Five Roses. South Africa's favorite tea is expertly blended to ensure that it remains of the highest quality consistently. It's this commitment to excellence that Five Roses puts into making the perfect cup of tea, which delivers its uniquely superior and distinctive taste. Five Roses salutes South African women who too are committed to excellence. So today we'll be chatting with Rafilwe Sessiani, the dynamic founder behind 1828, a woman-led organization empowering South Africa as disadvantaged young women. She's joining us for a refreshing cup of Five Roses green tea with apple and pear flavor, which combines the goodness of green tea with the crisp flavor of apple and the naturally sweet taste of pear. For other delicious green tea flavor combinations, there's also lemon and lime or refreshing mint. So don't go away. We'll be back after the break with Rafilo Sessiani and Five Roses right here in the loft. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, 1828 is an award-winning non-profit organization dedicated to changing the lives of young women from disadvantaged backgrounds. Now, by developing strategies for their educational and personal development, they encourage young women to view higher education as an attractive and necessary tool for their empowerment. Spearheading this amazing initiative is its passionate founder and director, Rafilwe Sisiani. Welcome back to The Loft. Thank you so much. This loft is the most awesome place to be, and I love coming here. Now, you know that I'm your biggest fan. You are basically <laughs> my icon. And Stop. I mean, no, but you really are incredible. Thank I you. I want to know a little bit more about 1828 and how you're empowering these women. This is my favorite story to tell, Jenny, so with pleasure. <laughs> 1828 is a nonprofit organization that works with girls between the ages of 18 and 28, and we do this in three ways. Number one is life skills workshops for girls in disadvantaged high schools in grade 11 and grade 12. We go into a school and we chat to the girls about things that you and I would probably take for granted. It's stuff like how to put together a CV, what do I wear to an interview? How do I prepare my application forms for financial assistance? Or how do I prepare an application form for university? A lot of our girls, because they're the first in their families to finish matric and get into university, lack that role modeling and lack that academic support. So it's really mm. important for them to get a sense of confidence and to feel that they've got what it takes to make it. And through these workshops, we get a sense of who's actually university ready and what other skills need to be imparted to the girls to get them to make that seamless transition from matric and into varsity. The second focus area is the mentorship program called the Big Sister Network. And what we do with that is we match our girls to professional women in various careers to get additional support and exposure really around the world of work. I mentioned that there's no much support at home and in the communities. Mm. So when you have a big sister, it makes you feel like you've also got what it takes to make it, right? Because exactly. you see someone who's already completed the journey that you're starting on. So a lot of role modeling is taking place, a lot of exposure in terms of careers and job shadowing and learnerships. And when you feel overwhelmed, about a course that you failed or how you're going to prepare, the big sister is the one who's rooting for you and giving you that psychosocial support to help you get further. And last but not least, we do the financial assistance program. We saw last year with that hectic fees must fall in 2015, yeah. where a lot of young people became very frustrated by the fact that they don't have money to get to university. And when you remove the financial constraints that make higher education so prohibitively expensive, you see young women really thrive. So we have to go out and fundraise to get the money for girls to complete an undergraduate degree of their choice, any degree. And the reason wow. that we're not prescriptive is because you will make a success of your career when you study something that you're passionate about. And when you graduate, whether you go into employment or you become an entrepreneur, you've been doing something that you love all along anyway. And through this life skills workshops, mentorship focus and financial assistance, we really just want to create a pipeline of successful professional women in different sectors of the economy. You are such a role model. I think this is so valuable, what you're giving these women. But today's, you know, being Youth Day, mm. I think it's only fitting that we speak about education. I read recently that 70% um, of learners t um, in grade four mm. can't even read yet. So it is so important. We need education so badly. Do you have any personal stories of how you've seen it, education change people's lives? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we know that there's a lot of research 
around how educating women makes families, makes communities better. It's not that men don't confer the benefits of their education, but women are more likely to do so, and there's a greater impact on that. If a woman is educated, her children are more likely to be educated, they will delay having families, they will have healthier choices, the children will just live in a better community because the mm. mother is more empowered intellectually, and so she makes different you know, decisions socioeconomically as well. But from a personal perspective in terms of 1828, the goals that we work with are all coming from female-headed households, right? And I mentioned that they're the first to get to university. So you get this huge, huge sense of relief, number one, from the mothers when they see their daughters graduating. You get this major confidence boost and you see the girl, you know, ready to go out there and make a huge difference. And when she starts going out into the world, she then becomes a role model to other, you know, younger siblings and members in her own family and community. So it becomes this really awesome virtuous cycle where, because one makes it, one person makes it out of that poverty trap exactly. and that circle of violence and, and, and abuse or neglect or lack of confidence it changes everything when you're educated and again as I mentioned you confer the benefits onto others so you're making better decisions in the household better decisions around your spending around the health and it benefits everyone I have asked you this before but now I'm convinced of it are you going to be the first female president of South Africa <laughs> <laughs> not likely 1828 is stressful enough as it is I think I'll stick to my guns and just carry on with what I'm doing now Jeannie you are also extremely educated I think you're on degree number four now <laughs> no correct. you've completed degree number four. I have, yes. What degrees do you have and, and what, I mean, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what well, degrees have you completed? The thing is, when we were younger, we couldn't go out and say that we were nerds, but Jeannie, I'm happy to say that I'm a fully-fledged nerd and I'm proud of it. Oh, no, I'm so <laughs> into nerds. Nerds rule the world. Yeah. And education has always just been a really awesome plan B and something to fall back on. But I studied economics and finance because that's always been my passion point. So I did my undergrad in economics. I've got an honours degree in economics. I did the management advancement programme at this business school. And I've just come back from Wales in the UK. I was at Cardiff University doing a postgraduate qualification in financial economics. And I just think you can't be heading up an organization that's encouraging girls to get a degree and you're the laziest person in the group, right? You're the one who doesn't have any certificates. So I think by doing this, it's also fostering that whole culture and inculcating the sense that the girls really have to go out there and make a difference and get their education mm. because it's something that no one can take away from you. And it just gives you a whole range of options and choices. If I choose to go back into private banking or investment management, which was my background before, yeah. I've got the qualifications to do so. But I just think it really stands me as a founder and the young people that I work with in good stead to see that it is something that can be done and must be done. Exactly. Now, in 2010, you were one of the top three finalists for the Black Business Quarterly Awards, and you won the CEO magazine's Most Influential Woman in South Africa. I mean, how does that feel to be such a role model? At times, it's very intimidating, I'll be honest. Mm. Um, and, and I think the sense of pressure comes more from the pressure that I put on myself and the expectations that I think I have of myself and where I think I ought to be. It's not so much about the awards or the recognition, but people would have certain expectations that things will be done in a certain way and they look to you to that. So what has always helped me is just a sense of humility and being open-minded and having a teachable spirit. Yeah. And I've got really awesome role models and women mentoring me, so I look to them in times of doubt and when I feel, okay, perhaps this is becoming a bit overwhelming. But yeah, it's, it, it comes with huge responsibilities, but it's worth it. Are one of your female mentors, perhaps, Michelle Obama. Oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I had the pleasure of meeting her, though, in uh, 2011 for the mm -hmm. Young African Women Leaders Forum. And what that did was they brought together young women from across the continent. And we were asked to share and collaborate and discuss the various issues that our countries and our regions are facing and how we could collaboratively come up with solutions. So the expectation is that if a young woman is running a project in South Africa or Mozambique or Guinea or Nigeria, you'd see what the commonalities are as well as the differences and then jointly design a solution. And we were lucky enough to get funding from the White House to do a project around greening the, the environment and helping girls be environmentally conscious, exposing them to different careers in the green economy. Wow. We were picking up literate schools. It was really awesome. And, and I saw just the power of collaboration and just harnessing the wealth that women on the continent sure. have that came through that project with Michelle Obama. And then you did it again with Barack Obama, no? Mm -hmm. So Amazing. in 2012, I was chosen for a different initiative and we traveled to the US. And what that program sought to do was to build a bridge, really, 
between the different countries on the continent with America. So there was a lot of networking, there were mentorship opportunities, potential funding opportunities for projects that are designed in Africa for Africans and the sort of support and learning that we could give to the Americans. And we went over there for about two months or so to learn from the best and they obviously learned from the best too because they chose really awesome young African leaders and I'm in touch with some of them across the, country, the continent. That's so important that you stay in touch because one day when you are the global leader of South Africa, <laughs> as I have no doubt you are going to be, that is amazing. But now, apart from being a global leader of South Africa and Africa, and you're a voiceover artist, you're an MC, and you have a budding acting career, I mean, how do you find the time for everything? And, and what is your list of priorities almost? I think if something is important to Eugenie, you will always make time for it. Yeah. Nowadays, everyone is really stressed. We're all running around. We've got 100,000 million things to do. And if something is important, you make the time for yeah. it. Um, education has always been important to me, so I made the time to go to school and get those qualifications. But the work that I do on television and radio as a voiceover artist, doing my MC work and motivational speaking, is, is something that I have the talent for. Yeah. So therefore, I will make the time for it. Do you it think that's your soul food? Absolutely it is. And I love meeting new people and networking and learning and engaging with them. So that talent really allows me to tap into that and make the most of it. What would you say to young women who kind of want to follow in your footsteps? I would encourage them actually not to follow in my footsteps. <laughs> this is going to sound really weird, but I believe every person has got their own destiny mm -hmm. and each sure. young woman and girl has got their own path to follow. I certainly hope that they will learn from the mistakes that I've made and not make the same mistakes, because you can either be a warning or you can be an example. I think to most people I've been a warning. Yes. And for me, really, it's, it's just being a co-creator in the visions that they craft for themselves and their lives and their destinies. And if I'm able to help or provide inspiration or any sort of support, then that really goes a long way. But education is key. And I think the message that I really want to emphasize is that no matter how hard it gets or how tough it is at home, there will always be a way out if you just stay focused. I love interviewing you because you are just so humble and you're this amazing, astute young woman that I really think is, you're my number one role model. I mean, really, <laughs> well done on everything that you've Thank done. Thank you very much, Jeannie. So amazing chatting to you Thank again. You. And go forth and conquer. <laughs> you really can do it. Now, it was Nelson Mandela's words, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. That has inspired a legion of South Africans, like Rafilwe, to stand up and be the change. And to all of you who are dedicated to exceptional initiatives, Five Roses salutes you. Now we're giving away a fabulous Five Roses gift pack containing an assortment of their delicious teas. To stand a chance to win, simply SMS the keyword Five Roses, your name and city to 33728. SMSs are charged at 1 Rand 50. T's and C's do apply. And visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for details. Join us again this time next week when we will be chatting to yet another exceptional South African woman. And remember, until then, nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses.